Hello my friends Welcome to another episode of Rides Through Time And today we're heading for David Stowe Airfield Or RAF David Stowe Or David Stowe Aerodrome You decide Now David Stowe is a World War II airfield with a bit of a twist and if you want to know what the twist is stick around I actually learned to drive at David Stowe many years ago My dad used to take me out there in a car, sit me on his lap and let me steer and then as soon as I was old enough or long enough to reach the pedals I learned to drive properly I was about 11 years old and in turn I did the same with my son he was 10 when he learned to drive at Davidstow. Anyway, I'll tell you a bit about the airfield as we're on the way. It was the highest airfield in the country at 970 feet. And it was the largest airfield in the West Country. and it had a 2,000 yard runway to accommodate the four engine bombers it was constructed, or should I say thrown together in 1942 and over 800 personnel were based there I think the um, the Americans were less than impressed by the Cornish winter up on Bodmin Moor. Now, 1942 may seem a little late in the day for building airfields, and it was really in response to. France falling to Germany, up until that point there really wasn't any need for airfields in this part of the world but obviously then the war was a lot closer to home and several airfields sprung up throughout Cornwall and Devon and in just a moment the scenery will open up and I'll be able to show you around bit rough out here, got to wash the potholes now there's the old control tower
Let's have a little poke around, shall we? Now I did watch a video recently that showed you what all these old buildings were what their purpose was during the war if I can find a link to that in case you're interested there'll be it it'll be in the description well it just appears to be a dumping ground uh, disgusting head down this way and see what this little construction is down here and then we'll head back for the uh, control tower sure the Go GoPro can pick up the the tours over there Brown Willie the highest point in Cornwall and rail tour where I did my last ride through time video the second highest point in Cornwall I dare say that was some obstacle for the pilots right let's get back, back to the bike and head back over to the control tower, have a look around that. Right, let's go and have a little poke around the control tower and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about this airfield. I have bought my drone but it's quite breezy so if I can't use it I've got some other footage that I've used before here. Right no idea how well the uh, GoPro is going to work in here. the love lounge let's try my luck let's 
go upstairs. Hey, Ernie. Now I'm guessing this is overlooking the what would have been the main runway running across that way. So it was an A-class bomber station and its main purpose was to uh, bolster 19 group coastal commands anti-U-boat campaign campaign. Now there were regular bombing raids carried out on the U-boat pens on the French coast uh, like Saint-Nazaire and Brest, La Palice and so on and these operations became known as the Milk Run to Saint-Nazaire and to coin a phrase of the time the flak was so thick you could get out and walk on it Now, apart from the U-boat campaigns, or anti-U-boat campaigns, should I say, uh, there are anti-boat campaigns and uh, a lot of successful air-sea rescue missions. Now, some of the bombers flying from here with their the B-24 Liberators, B-17 Flying Fortresses, the Sterlings, Lancasters, Bristol Bowfighters, Wellingtons, and of course Spitfires. Now on D-Day, three enemy destroyers were spotted heading for the Normandy landings and uh, a group of Bristol Bowfighters took off from here. They met with a squadron of Mosquitoes off Land's End and proceeded to batter the German flotilla which was forced to turn and take shelter in Brest to look its wounds and our rest as they say is history so the war ended shortly after and you might think the airfield would have become redundant well here's the twist Between 1952 and 1955, Davidstowe Airfield became a race circuit. The main runway was used as a mile straight. There were several race meetings held here involving all sorts of sports cars and it even hosted the most prestigious of all, Formula One, which at the time were pretty much barrels on wheels with more power than they probably should have. Sadly the racing scene came to an end for several reasons. Partly I believe due to its location. Cornwall wasn't the easiest of places to get to back then. The weather always seemed to be against it with their fog and rain etc. And funding perhaps partly due to uh, new safety measures that had to uh, be implemented after the horrific incident at Le Mans, which I think was 1955. So anyway, it became unviable. However, even today, there are still aircraft of sorts using the airfield. Light aircraft, model aircraft, micro lights. like a whisper from the past.
So there you go, that was David Stowe Airfield. RAF David Stowe. David Stowe Aerodrome. I hope you enjoyed our little trip out today. Before I go, I just want to share a couple of things with you. First of all, you should check out Hippo Drones. I'll put a link up here to his channel. He actually did three videos on different airfields in a different part of the country. And they are very interesting, give them a watch. He's also a really likeable chap. And finally, just about a quarter of a mile from the airfield, let's see if I can show you next to the big dairy there you will find Cornwall at War Museum which is absolutely fascinating now I spent half a day in there having a good look around it's just in there I believe or was in the next turning next turning Here we are, RAF Museum. It says up there, David Stowe Moore, RAF Memorial Museum. Like I say, I've spent half a day in there, but I could have spent two days in there looking around. It's so interesting. So if you are down this way, check out the museum when it's open of course and enjoy ah here's the entrance there we go RAF David Stowmore in honour of all who served here 1942 to 1945 They've got all sorts in there, from artefacts, weapons, vehicles. Right. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, take care. Ciao for now. Bye bye.